Hello, my name is Anne and Toby's upstairs. <laughs> yes, this is a Toby Knits podcast episode 101. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm glad you stopped by to have a look. Mondays I talk about knitting and crochet generally for about 10-15 minutes. Wednesdays I talk about my cross stitch which I have picked up again in the past two years since the pandemic started. I used to do it a long long time ago and on Fridays I talk about Quilty Fun which is a new craft for me, quilting. But today it's all about the knitting which I have done since I was a little girl. My grandmother who I live next door to in Liverpool, England taught me how to do it. And over the years, I've made lots and lots of stuff. If you look around a little bit, you might see that I'm not in my usual place. Usually I'm up in my craft room upstairs in our bungalow, but because we're turning that back into a bedroom for my little grandson and all the future grands, um, we decided to put the craft room back in the basement. It's got a lot more room. I've got a sewing area. I've got my knitting area. I've got a TV set up. It's really nice down here. Uh, it needs a lot of work though. We still have to uh, paint it and get some more furniture for it. And um, once I've got it all organized, I'll give you a room tour. But in the meantime, let's just get chatting about the knitting. So I have a finished object and I actually did finish my socks. I know I showed you one um, two weeks ago and was almost finished the second. Well, now I have them both done. And these are a little short pair of socks that I did using the scraps that were left from Ellie Jones's um, Craft House Minis. These are a set of five 20 gram balls of yarn or skeins of yarn that are sent to me once a month. And she has a different color for each month. This was January's. And this particular, so what I did was I put a square in my mitered square blanket in each of the colors. So there's five. And I put a triangulum in the triangulum blanket for each of the colors to represent that month, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then what I had left over, I had enough to make a pair of socks. So what I did, this is called the Fobonichi method, and it's a fun method to do. Um, so what you do is you just do your regular cuff, and I chose to do my heel cuff and toe in white, one of my favorite colors to do. And then you do two rows of one color and then three rows of the next color. So then you add the two and the three together to make five. So you do five rows of that color. Then five and three is eight. So you do eight rows of that color. Then five and eight is 13. And then you start again. In this case, I started with one, then two, then three and so on, just so that I would mix up the colors because otherwise they'd all look exactly the same as that, which is okay, but I didn't want them to all look the same. I wanted it to look a bit scattered. So I really, really like them. I did it on a 2.25 needle. I did one on a chow go and one on a higher higher. And so I found if I do them both at the same time, I don't have that second sock syndrome thing as much and you end up with a nice pair of socks. So what I did was I would do the cuff on one, then the cuff on the next one, then the first bunch of colors to the heel flap and turn, then go back and do the same here, then the heel flap and turn, and then, you know, keep going until I finished. And then it wasn't long before I had a finished pair. So these are those and I love them. I have not washed them or blocked them yet. And I do like short socks, especially in the summertime, because I still wear my socks. Because if you're going out with running shoes on or something on your pair of jeans, you still need a pair of socks. So that's my socks. So this is the mitered square blanket that you've all seen 
probably loads of times now. You're probably fed up. If you're fed up with these two particular projects, let me know because I can still keep working on them, but just not show you them as much. So um, this is where I am with my new set of colors for March. Not very far, really. But there is the January and February colors, each one separated again by a white block, which I love. So it's going to be a nice blanket when it's finished. And it's a, I enjoy doing the Midas squares. It's a, and it takes about an hour or so to do one square and it's just relaxing. You know what you're doing. It's dead easy. I typically do it in the car sometimes if we're driving into Ottawa. I live in Canada, uh, just outside of Ottawa. I live in a little village and it's about a 45 minute drive into the city of Ottawa. So, um, well, I don't drive period. So while my husband's driving, I just sit there and knit away and look out the window. It's kind of fun. So this is the triangular blanket, which is also from um, Ellie Jones of Craft House Magic. So these are her minis and this is her pattern. And she brought this pattern out at Christmas for a ad, an advent she did. But I just liked the pattern and decided I would use her mixtape minis each month. And it, you can do them all just one after the other and mix all the colors up and jumble them. But what I wanted to do was do each month in the colors for that month. Obviously, I had to use one color twice because of the fact that there's only five minis in the, the bundles and there are six triangles to make sort of this flower. And then that, of course, is what I'm separating them with. White, you might have known. This is February's colors, which are very pretty. And this is the start of um, March's colors. Now, here's something I did wrong. I keep doing wrong things with this, but it doesn't matter. It's easy to fix. So I had done these two here, the dividing ones. And what I should have done when I stitched, so I did this pink one first, what I should have done was I should have done the blue one here and then the other three colors all the way around so that when I got to this stitch, this one, I would have used this side and this side to join with just casting on one set here, but I didn't. For some reason, I attached it here. Well, then I thought, well, that's not going to work now because how am I going to attach the white to the blue? So I just sewed them together. I just whip stitched them together, which I thought was just as easy. And you would hardly know. So that's what I did there. So yeah, these are the two colors. This is like a very pit. Let me see if I can remember what the colors were and I'll show you what they are. Uh, March. So we've got this one I think is pink tonal and that's Home Sweet Alabama. This one I think is pale blues another day in paradise and the other three colors i get to use this month are the pink and blue is west end girls the pale green tonal is here i go again and the different shades of pink are like a prayer so i really love these i've been rolling them up myself into my, a, a ball um myself instead of using my swift and i'd asked online a couple of weeks ago what is the best way should i do it myself or not and a lot of people said when it's a mini just do it by hand and it's actually quite relaxing to sit there i put my knees up and i stick it around my knees and while i'm watching telly i just you know swift do it away swift away of course i didn't do the swift now 
So this little gem is actually what was left from making the socks. And this is all five colors. And what I did was I magic knotted them together and wound them as one ball. And I'm going to keep making this magic knot ball until it's big enough to either make one continuous pair of socks or a blanket or I was thinking maybe a um, cow. I <laughs> couldn't think of the name then. Oh my God, I bet you were all yelling, cow, lamb, cow, scarf, cow. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so that's what my plan with that. So, and that way you don't know what the colors are going to be as you're going because you've forgotten because you, you know, and it might only be not even enough for a, a row. Or it might only be enough for a row and a bit. Like, so I think that's kind of going to be funny to make my magic knot ball. So then every piece of this mini mixed tape mini will get used up. Every bit. How fun is that? So that brings me on to a new pair of socks. So... This will be using the greens from the February. And I've only got it set up on one at the moment. And this one is gonna be different from the last one. So here it is. I started and I just did eight rows, I think it was. Could have been, was it eight? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Eight rows of knit one pearl one, knit two pearl two, sorry, my rib. Then I just went into the plain um, stocking stitch. But when you're doing magic loop, it's just knit. And I just did, I think I did, did I do 10, two, four, six? Yeah, 10 rows of that. And what I did first, I should say, is I weighed all my balls and each of them that I had left from doing the triangulum and the um, mitered square blanket, I had 10 grams left. So I did this one color all the way until I was at five grams. I had a little scale beside me to weigh it. And then I, then I thought, okay, that's it now. I'm now gonna change color. So I have done the heel flap and turn in the next color. And then I've just cast on, um, uh, where is it? Got to find it, it's hiding. This green is going to be for the um, gusset and a little bit more. And these are going to be very short socks. And then I will go to this color, and then this one will be the toe. So I think this is gonna be a cool way to make socks. I'm really enjoying doing the different sort of stripy patterny type things. Um, you know, because I don't want them all to be exactly the same, but there's only so many different variations of a stripe you can do. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this and I am hoping to be able to do um, a couple more different types of videos in the future now that I have more space. Still only have my little iPhone though. <laughs> Oh, well, I have to look into getting some different cameras so I can get better angles for you guys. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Stop by on Wednesday if you're interested in cross stitch. Friday if you're interested in quilting. But if not, see you next Monday for some more knitting.